Hello everyone. Um, so as Paul, I'll just get the clicker. Hang on. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, what we've done in Cisco. Uh, Cisco is a large networking company, right? We uh, I'm part of the routing and switching uh, products group. So um, we deal with documentation. I'm a product documentation manager. We deal with documentation for these routers and switches. So I'll quickly take you through what we've done with AR. And uh, Paul, thanks for that acronym earlier today. Uh, I realized most of what we've done is IR. It's informed reality, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, but most of the focus of the talk is really going to be on uh, you know some of the feedback that we got from our customers, from Cisco customers, and also uh, I want to talk to you about some of the things we want to do and get your input, uh, you know, in terms of how that's going to be possible. So before I start, I just want a quick show of hands. How many of you from AR uh, uh, solutions providing companies? How many of you provide AR solutions? Okay. Great. And how many of you are looking to implement AR in your enterprise, in your companies? Okay, it's a good mix. Okay. Is anybody here from a tech docs background, a tech or product documentation background? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I'm going to run a video. Our AR solution makes product information available at your fingertips, literally. To experience this, just download the free Blipper AR app and point your smartphone or tablet at select Cisco devices to see hotspots on the devices. Click the hotspots to access information about the device, such as descriptions of each device component. You can also see information related to the supported modules that work with your device. This solution helps you see virtual modules being inserted into the physical device in front of you, eliminating the need to read through an installation manual. Studies show that using AR for installation tasks increases efficiency by 30% and first-time accuracy by up to 90%. You can also access information about the status of the LEDs on your device if there is a system or boot failure, and get details of specific commands to troubleshoot critical and major alarms. If you are the kind who likes the good old PDF documents better, you can access them as well using this app. Great. So as you can see here, um, the use case that we're targeting really is installation, right? You've taken a new device out of the box, and most of the time you really don't know. I mean, you're not really an expert. You're just there to install it, right? And uh, if you can just point your device, uh, point your mobile at the device and get information on how to install it, nothing like it, right? So we kind of develop this as a direct response to customer feedback, that it's, it's sometimes very difficult to find specific information about the tasks that you're about to do, right? And we uh, demoed this at, a, at an event recently, at a customer event. And 90%, it wasn't a large number of people, but about 200 people who saw the uh, demo, they specifically said that you know, it, 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 it makes it much more easier for them to get uh, relevant information. Right? And um, there are a few use cases that, and some of this covered earlier today, uh, there are a few use cases that came, that they spoke about specifically, right? Uh, they generally, uh, so in a lab, these routers and switches are typically deployed in a lab, right? And a lot of people who go there to install or even uh, maintain these devices, they, they don't have uh, specific knowledge about those devices. They just have typically a job sheet that they take with them. They refer to the job sheet and they, you know, kind of uh, uh, go ahead with the task. So if you can actually overlay information onto the device in front of you, it's so much more easy to do that task. Uh, the other use case, again, somebody else spoke about it earlier today, is the training part, right? So if you are a company that provides training uh, about Cisco devices, or if you just want to learn about Cisco devices, or, you know, or any large company's devices, right? Uh, an AR solution makes much more sense than reading through documents. And uh, the other use case, again, discovered earlier today, and I want to show you how it applies to a company like Cisco that has networking devices. I'll, I'll cover that in detail a little later. So we obviously want to, uh, so this is just a pilot we kind of did. We want to kind of deploy this across the routers and switches that we have. But we want to go a little further than that, right? Now, what you saw here uh, is static, in the, uh, what Paul called in informed reality, right? You saw static information being uh, kind of uh, overlaid onto a physical device, right? 
But what if we can go a little further than that? What if we, uh, you know, so if you're scanning, you take a tablet or a phone, you scan a device, and what you see is a switch in front of you, right? You scan the device, and what if it can connect? So uh, for those of you not familiar with networking devices, we have something called a network controller that, that manages uh, you know, the network devices in the lab, right? So what if you can connect to the network controller directly, right? And it can give you specific information about, uh, so for example, you see the red one and two there. It can tell you that you know, the cables that you've connected are wrong, right? So it, give, it gives direct information from the network controller, right? And it tells you the remedial uh, action as well, you know, where you're supposed to, uh, to, to plug it in, right? So that's taking it a step further, and we have a POC for that, but we, you know, I'd like to talk to um, uh, solution providers you know, who can help us with something like that. So it can tell you that these port connections are wrong, and this is what you need to do, right? So that's one use case that we're exploring. We don't have a, a full-fledged solution for it as yet, so just want to uh, put it out there. Okay? The other, the remote assistance, uh, I forget who spoke about it earlier today, but uh, you know, this is how it will apply to our, our context, right? So you have uh, uh, in the lab again, right, the same example that I spoke about, and this is a simple example just for a demo, right? I mean, you're pointing uh, your phone at the device, right? And, uh, there, and uh, you don't know what to do, so you call a remote expert, and they can see exactly what you're seeing, right? And as somebody else said earlier, you, they can, uh, I think it was a Dutch police uh, implementation, right? So you can actually, um, the remote expert can actually interact with what they're seeing, right? And they can say, instead of saying, you know, take the leftmost cable from the second row, right, and plug it into the other row, you can actually say, take this cable and put it in there, right? So it's so much more easier, right? Uh, so yeah, that's that's really the other use case that we have. And again, uh, you know, um, I'm here both days, so uh, please feel to reach out to me if you you know if you have solutions for this. Right. Um, I also want to talk about um, a couple of challenges that we have uh, in our current implementation. The one that the video that you saw. So as I said, right now it works only for an installation use case. You've taken something fresh out of the box. Right? And, and it's able to recognize it without markers in the sense you, know, you don't need like a specific marker there. It recognizes the actual image of the box. Right? Um, the problem though is, uh, and I, realize, I just realized I can't click on that. Uh, can I? Uh, the, the, those two links there, can somebody click on that for me please? Yeah, right, so you have, uh, this is one of our issues, right? There is uh, cabling all over the place. So you cannot really, uh, you know, uh, predict how a device is going to look in uh, in a lab environment. So we don't really have a solution for this. How do we kind of you know get over this challenge, right? Uh, how do you without a specific marker? How do you recognize devices like this in the lab? And there's one more link there. If you click on that, is please the first one. Yeah. So what you see on the top and the bottom, uh, they are actually the same device, right? But they are modular devices, so they can be configured in many ways. So, so you can't really control how a Cisco customer is going to uh, configure their device, right? So that's another challenge that we face, which is why our use case is currently limited to you know, a fresh installation. So if there's a solution for this, I'd love to hear that as well. If you can go back to that other slide, please. Yeah. OK. Um, and the other challenge that we have, and, and some others mentioned that as well, is uh, you know, most of our labs, are, uh, they don't have internet connectivity, right? So any solution that we have has to work offline as well. Um, and of course, I mean, we'd love to have all of this functionality into one single company branded app, right? And rather than uh, we, uh, Blipper has been good to us. We, you know, we did that with Blipper, right? But if if we can get one app uh, that can work, uh, you know, with all this functionality, that'd be great. We can just direct them to the Cisco App Store to get it, right? So uh, that's all really I had. I mean, I had a, a, a so for those of you who are from AR Solutions companies, right? I mean, you can either um, ask this, uh, answer this now or later, right? Uh, do you see other use cases for companies like Cisco, large enterprises like Cisco in this industry, right? And um, specifically for the product uh, context, product information context, right? Technical documentation. Uh, this is how, what we've thought of. If you have any other suggestions, I'm more than willing to listen to that. And for those of you who are from enterprises looking to implement um, a solution like this, I mean, if you have any questions, I'm more than willing to take that. That's what I have. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for the talk. One question came in, okay, another one just mm -hmm. came in. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do the second one. Can you speak more to the content authoring management aspect? Right. So, um in the specific example you saw, uh, all the content authoring happens within the app. So, there is a, a web interface that we have. 
uh, where you can put in all the content that you want. And it can be either content directly in the app or uh, it can uh, be links to existing content anywhere on the net, right? And uh, in terms of managing that content, if, it's, uh, if you're single sourcing that content from somewhere, the management is much more easier. Right? If you're creating specific content in the app for a particular device, then it becomes a little more tricky. You know, updating that content becomes more tricky. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Sam. Let's give Sam a round of applause. Thank you.